Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're giving you guys our album review of Spirituality and Distortion by Igor. So we listened to this album for the last week constantly on over and over and I have to say this is actually a really good album for multiple reasons and one of the biggest reasons is that this album is accessible. Now Igor his genre of metal is the more avant-garde, maybe even classical, because there's a lot of that influence in his music. It's just really weird stuff, really like off the wall. And if you listen to the older stuff, it gets really crazy. But this album, for the most part, is pretty straightforward. The only thing that's really like out there for it is just the instrumentation. You get, um, accordion, you get, you know, operatic singing, you get um, harpsichord, you get all these eastern, you know, string instruments. You get a lot of that kind of stuff that you don't normally hear in a lot of metal music. But it's still got, you know, his band performing, it's still got, you know, riffs that are catchy, like it's still pretty straightforward. And I think it's perfect for fans of Igor that want to hear interesting stuff that you don't normally hear in other music. But also for people who want to get into, you know, him and his band, I think this is a really good album to start with. Because, you know, the, cra the craziest this album gets is Very Noise. And I kind of feel like that song is a little bit problematic on this album because it does not fit. It's a cool song. I like it. It's a really cool sounding song. But if you listen to the rest of the album and then put that on, it feels totally out of left field. Like, what is this song doing here? It kind of feels like something that would belong on another one of his albums. So, it's, you know, it's like, why is it there? It's still a good song, but it's just in the context of the album, I feel like it struggles. That being said, one of the biggest things about this album that I really loved is just how interesting it is. And I feel like almost every song has something about it that you can point out that's interesting. Mm -hmm. One of the coolest things is in Himalaya Massive Ritual, there was a thing at the beginning of the album, this like weird kind of bell, or no, the song, there's a weird kind of bell sound that happens at the beginning of the song, and I think it comes back at the end. Now, what the heck is that? You think it's some kind of sample or some kind of thing? No, there was a video that was released of the five weirdest instruments that Igor's used in his music, and that sound was in that video, and what is that sound? They took a, a gas canister thing, sawed off the top, made some indents in it, and their drummer, his drummer played that. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> but it got such a cool and unique sound, and that's yeah. like totally the kind of character that Igor has, using totally non-conventional means to make music. So even though this album's so much more accept uh, accessible, it still has the aspects of his music that are just totally in there. It's very interesting, all those things you say, and I think I agree with a lot of your points, but I had a different perspective of all those things. Um, for example, like you're saying accessible, and I think it is, but only in a certain way, because I feel like this is one of those albums where if you were to take like a group of people, like let's say you take a group of a hundred people and throw them in a room, and you ask them all to listen to this album, I think everybody in that room will be able to find something in this album that they say, yes, I like that. So in that sense, it's, it's accessible. But I think overall, if you ask all of them, did you like this entire album as a whole? I think you'll get a very small percentage of people that say, yes, I like the entire album as a whole because there's so much different stuff going on. It's almost like Igor has a hard time fine tuning a specific sound to go with. The thing is, there is an audience for this and that's evident because obviously TV Fish likes it. There's other people that like it. There's other albums like this, like Empath, for example, was a very well-received album last year from Devin Townsend. I didn't really like that album. I thought it was too wacky, right? I like things that are a little more grounded. Um, uh, a little more, maybe grounded is not the right word. They have more direction to them. And more focus. More right. focus, this focus direction, that's, that type of thing. So when I listen to an album like this, it's not that I'm listening to it saying this is bad music, because musically, it's good, there's a lot of creativity there. But having it make sense to me and having it, it, it's just not something that I wanna put on and listen to because when I listen to music, it's almost very mood driven. 
You know what I mean? Sometimes in the mood, I'm in the mood for, um, you know, lighter type of metal music, like maybe Ghost or something. Sometimes I'm in the mood for obviously the much heavier stuff, like Dying Fetus or something like that, right? So there's a lot of mood-driven stuff. With this, I feel like I, there's no mood that suits this for me, right? But there's certain elements of this album that when I'm listening to it, I'm like, I can get behind that. You mentioned that there's a lot of different things. There's another one I'll mention, the hand pan in Camel Dance Floor, which is that sound you hear at the beginning. That's really cool. Um, you know, you mentioned the gas can thing, which I didn't know about, that's pretty cool. And a lot of different things. So I like that there's creativity there. I like that there's um, different elements there and just things that kind of make you go, hmm, what is that? But it's difficult for me as a listener to sit through a whole session and really not get bored because I don't know, there's just, there's almost so much stuff happening. I just can't get in the one mood to listen to it all. There's a couple songs that I added to my playlist that I thought these songs are, are good. Parpang and Paranoid Bulldozer Italiano. Those two songs are, are good, but I feel like they're good uh, in respect to this album. I don't think they're great songs like overall. They probably fall on the bottom end of my playlist as far as the quality of songs that I enjoy. So I'm a little conflicted as to how I feel because I, can, I get the positivity that this album brings and I get all the cool stuff that it brings, but me personally had a really hard time enjoying it. So one thing that I felt was a little bit tough for me with this album was just really, really getting enveloped in it completely. Now, I think this is still an awesome album. Like there's so much cool stuff about it, but as I'm listening to it, I'm not really like gelling with it as much. And I feel yeah. like even though there's a lot of cool stuff in it, Sometimes I think, okay, can you guys just like play the cool riff and just jam out as opposed to all this weird stuff happening? Now, some songs I felt that way about last week that I don't anymore, like Himalaya Massive Ritual, but a song like um, Overweight Posey or Barocco Satani, like those songs are probably the only songs on the album that I really like felt were kind of forgettable. Yeah or maybe Muse at Maximum as well. Like those ones just didn't really have enough of a character to me to really stand out among the rest because those songs have aspects of them that are already used in the album mm -hmm. and on an album that is so specific with each song's sound, you know, those ones kind of get drowned out by the others. A few other songs I really liked include Lost in Introspection and Hollow Tree. What I really loved about Lost in Introspection is <laughs> the whole song sounds really cool. Both those songs have a really cool atmosphere, but the end of Lost in Introspection is hilarious <laughs> and it gets me every time where the piano player is playing and then he just starts smacking the piano <laughs> at the end. I didn't even catch that. <laughs> it's just what? like, you know, playing something. Oh, you know, dun, dun, dun. I think I know what you're talking about. And know? it's such a small, stupid <laughs> thing, but it made me laugh every time I heard it. Because <laughs> it's like you got this really beautiful sounding piano bit. And then he's just like, eh, fuck it. <laughs> just starts mashing. So I thought that was pretty funny. I also thought the, la the last song also grew on me a lot as well. That song, I really liked the sound of the male vocal in it. I don't know why, that, yeah. that, that just grew on me. I just really liked the sound of his voice. So I guess with all that being said, let's get to rating this album. So what do you rate it? I try not to let my personal opinion, you know, overweigh my my decision for way for rating albums but i ultimately believe strongly objectively that most listeners will have a hard time enjoying this album i think it's for a very niche audience a very specific type of listener um you know people just that just want different crazy random things and just don't care about any type of focus and people that like just disjunct albums so for that reason, I'm gonna go right in the middle because I really don't know how to weigh it more negatively or positively. I'm gonna give it a five. Okay. Well, conversely, I actually feel very different as to your opinion. I think this album is probably one of the most accessible uh, and easy to listen albums that Igor has ever made. And I feel like this album could be an easy gateway for, you know, 
your average listener to get into not only his music, but the avant-garde metal genre in general. That being said, this album didn't feel like it really had the sparks that it takes to create a toe tag album. It did have a lot more focus than the other albums, but there were points where it felt like they didn't gel together perfectly. So I'm gonna give it a seven, because it's seriously a solid album, and I think a lot of people would appreciate this, especially those who haven't heard of Igor's music. Cool. So anyway, a five from Vile and a seven from myself. I mean, it's a pretty varied score, but anyway, guys, that's all we got for you today. Remember to like the video if you like it. Comment, tell us in the comments below after one week, what do you think of this album? What do you think of Igor? Are you a new fan, old fan, any kind of fan? We want to know. Let us know. Anyway, so subscribe if you guys are new to the channel and check out our Spotify playlists in the description below. I'm TV Fish. I'm Wild Self. And keep those horns up.